Just a, so just a quick summary of the countries I've been in to, since leaving the U.S. and why. I went immediately to Chechnya uh, because I'm from the family of the Prophet and I thought they'd support me in Chechnya. I was there for a month. I pursued that line of reasoning. I even gained access to Kadyrov himself indirectly through a particular coffee shop and I could probably do it again through people I met at the airport. But... Um, they told me if they if he doesn't like you, he might kill you. <laughs> so I didn't go through with it. And then I immediately ended it's a small place. I ended up leaving. And I went to um, Georgia with, through a bus over the mountain. So it was like an adventure. It was like a couple hours away. I think I had to go to a middle city and then I could take a bus directly. Once I was in Georgia, I was still having my severe breathing problems and it took me about a year to start getting my brain back together. Three to four months into being there, I started writing my legal case and got obsessed with it and started to expand into this massive monstrous thing that I think is very important. Um, but I think if I rewrote it, it would be much faster than trying to finish the one I did. Um, and then um, I was there for two years. I would pursue online certifications, doing my Islamic research, writing a lot, organizing my thoughts around that. And then, um, yeah, doing online certifications, thinking of some sort of business or like strategy to pursue and, you know, stuff like that. A couple other things I won't name now. Once the money started to get scarce, like about at the beginning of last year, so last January 2022 is when I started thinking about like, I gotta stop focusing on the case and start figuring out what I'm gonna do to survive, like in the immediate, and I immediately started to realize, I tr filed my trust case at the beginning of the year, I think January, February, March, something like that, and then after that I was focused on finding some sort of strategy to do something else, like, like to survive, you know, and, um, I think I ended up, um, I couldn't decide, you know, it was just really, I, there was nothing. I'd been thinking about it for two years and researching, I, I just couldn't figure it out. And um, I ended up in Luxembourg seeking asylum because the asylum process was supposed to be super easy. Um, you're supposed to be able to show up at the foreign ministry and they take care of you from there, but it's not like that. I did that. The first day in Luxembourg was horrible because... I took, a t I took the bus to the city, but this it actually drops you off kind of like a 20 minute or 20 or 30 minute walk from from where the foreign ministry is. And I had to carry two huge suitcases all the way and people were looking at me the whole time because it's like through downtown basically that I was carrying these two huge suitcases. And they've seen that before with other asylum seekers, so they all knew what was going on. It was kind of unpleasant. And then... Um, I, um, they told me I had to go, like, it was another department that I needed to get the, part, the appointment at, and they sent me to, like, a dorm, and the dorm was full, so then they sent me, like, to, like, way outside the city to Vienden, and Vienden is beautiful, but it was like a rock road, like a hobbled road up a mountain that I had to carry my suitcase. And so I carried it from the bus stop 30 minutes through downtown, my suitcases, super heavy suitcases to, to the foreign ministry who sent me to a dorm. And then I had to I carry a heavy backpack back and forth. I had to get it, go get a phone number the first day to figure it out, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then um, come back to where the dorm was, super far away, walking uphill and downhill and stuff like that. And then once I got to Vienden, like it was like really far and I got there like at 9.55 at night and they closed the, the, the doors at 10, you know, and I had to carry my suitcase like way uphill and finally when I was just like dead, this guy showed up who was unloading something for a restaurant, super sweet, and he was like, where are you going, the dorm? And he was speaking French or Luxembourgish. And um, he just, he was just like, no, <laughs> you gotta come with me. And he he put my stuff in his van and drove me up, super sweet. I, I, God bless him, Tabarakullah, God bless him. He was, he was super, like he saved my life. 
was up a mountain on which on top of which there was a castle like that type of hobbled road and I was trying to carry two heavy like I did carry them like significantly down a hobbled road and then there was a huge up up climb and that's where he got me it took him 10 minutes to drive me up so you can imagine how long it would have taken to walk anyways that was like my first day in Luxembourg and then um you know I was there for like almost 10 days I think me and Dan the last day there I met somebody um which was really weird I don't want to get into that but um but and then um yeah that ended up have what had happened was I injured my leg not indirectly through that process through the involvement you know the energetic involvement and um also lost my watch and so that extended my stay in Luxembourg for about two weeks you know longer than it should have been but you know if I hadn't had those two weeks I would have probably ended up in Kuwait because that's what I was thinking but instead I wound up in Oman um and uh chose Oman because it's neither Shia or Sunni I still think it's a Dola Dolo Satun Fiyadum even though it's not it's been as easy as I thought might have been or wished not thought wished it would have been and um yeah it was kind of a desperate option but I chose it because it was a kingdom and I thought you might appreciate my project and uh, be willing to look at my situation um, which they may or may not be because the royal court like the thing is it took a month to get my submission to the royal court even though I had said how urgent it was from like the first day and um, the thing I think Omanis are indirect I have to realize they're like indirect you know so if you come in with like a strong energy, they they won't like confront it. They'll try to redirect it, and that's how they are. And I it's just a you know it's, it's a gap in communication. I think is what happened. And um, I am um, yeah. So tomorrow I think the plan is because now I can't get the I can't. Um, get hotel rooms or exchange currency then I'm just gonna leave tomorrow for Qatar I'm just gonna go to Qatar um through Dubai probably I'm gonna head to Dubai and from Dubai to Abu Dhabi and from Abu Dhabi to Qatar and then I'm gonna seek asylum there Inna Allah rawhum bil ibad Inna Allah basirum bil ibad Inna Allah ra'ufum bil ibad Inna Allah basirum bil ibad Inna Nasrullah kareem Inna Nasrullah kareem